In 2009, there was a paper on the tendinopathy continuum, and this said that a tendon pain is first reactive, and then it can flip to recover its normal structure if you offload it. Uh, but if you keep pushing the reactive tendon, then it gets degenerative, and it's very difficult to recover the normal structure. Then in 2018, they wrote uh, another paper where they explained it a little bit more, and they said that the reactive tendon probably recovers quickly because it affects the interfascicular matrix, the area within the tendon that um, is a lot more active than the fascicular matrix. And the degenerative tendon affects the fascicular matrix, the area where the collagen is, and that takes a very long time to turn over. So the problem that I've battled with in my own head is that a lot of this research on the interfascicular matrix is shown in horses in the tendon they mainly study which is similar to the Achilles tendon in humans and they've done some research on the Achilles tendon in humans but anyways this is a tendon that goes from a muscle to a bone and I care more about the patellar tendon which does go from muscle to bone but it also has a bone in the middle the patella and some of the tendon attaches just to the patella and then to the tibia so I would think that these ideas with the interfascicular matrix would apply less because this is more of a bone to bone interaction. Uh, so I've kind of looked at all these ideas with the interfascicular matrix and a reactive tendon and thought those must apply less with the patellar tendon. Um, but in 2022, they came up with another study that answered my questions although it was only on a few people, so maybe it's pretty limited. But they looked at the patellar tendons of healthy people, those with early tendinopathy and those with chronic tendinopathy. So you could look at the early tendinopathy as reactive and the chronic tendinopathy as degenerative. Uh, they actually took biopsies uh, of their tendons, which is kind of hard to do, but the people apparently agreed to it. Uh, they found that those with early tendinopathy or reactive tendinopathy mainly had changes in the interfascicular matrix of their patellar tendons, and those with chronic tendinopathy or degenerative tendinopathy had the changes in the fascicular matrix, uh, the changes to the collagen. So they said in early tendinopathy or the reactive tendinopathy, the structural integrity of the patellar tendon, um, a, of the patellar tendon's fascicular matrix of the collagen was preserved. So when you have a reactive tendinopathy in your patellar tendon, you are preserving your collagen. Uh, so they said there's a window of opportunity to keep the structure normal when you are dealing with jumper's knee. If it is a short-term jumper's knee, your window, your window of opportunity um, is early on when you can recover your normal structure easily because you have just affected your interfascicular matrix. So those are some things that I have learned uh, since this 2022 study. Hopefully they are beneficial to you. Hey!